This year marks the 60th anniversary of the historic March on Washington. And while we recall the images and the impact, we may not remember some of those who helped turn the dream into reality. Which brings us to Bayard Rustin and Martha Teichner. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivering his I Have a Dream speech. The sea of peaceful people, 250,000, black and white together. Say March on Washington, this is the snapshot history has saved from that August day in 1963. Now look there, the man just behind Dr. King. He's Bayard Rustin. Who, you say? Bayard Rustin, the strategist who organized the march, a singular transformative moment for the civil rights movement. The first demand is that we have effective civil rights legislation, no compromise, no filibuster. At the end of the march, he read a list of demands, but who remembers? Today, it's as if his name has been erased. What do you say? Everybody needs to know who this man is. He should be taught in every school. George C. Wolfe is trying to make that happen. How do you think we should regard Bayard Rustin? As an American hero who not only contributed heavily to one of the most significant, you know, peaceful demonstrations that this has ever happened in this country, but a man who also wrote the book on how to stage such an event. Lord, I hope and pray they come today. Wolf is the director of Rustin. A producer of the film is Higher Ground, former president and first lady Barack and Michelle Obama's production company. Our new offices. The third floor is uninhabitable, so we'll be all on top of each other down here. In theaters this week on Netflix, November 17th, the film stars Coleman Domingo as Bayard Rustin. We are going to put together the largest peaceful protest in the history of this nation. It tells the story behind the march, officially the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. This was the real office where Rustin and a small staff pulled the march together in less than two months the Harlem Brownstone called the Utopia Neighborhood Clubhouse. Bayard was the, the real general here, and he acted like a general, telling us all what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. You needed an organizer, but you needed somebody with charisma to make you want to follow him. That was his gift. Eleanor Holmes Norton, Washington, D.C.'s delegate in Congress, then a student at Yale Law School, was tasked with finding buses to bring people to the march. What did it feel like that day? It was the most gratifying day I can ever remember. Without him, there wouldn't have been the march. Without the march, there wouldn't have been the movement. Without the movement, you wouldn't have had the 64 Civil Rights Act, the 65 Voting Rights Act. That's pretty big. That's as big as it gets, I think. The week after the march, there he was on the cover of Life magazine. So how could a man that important be marginalized? Bard was one of these people that had a lot of baggage. He was a member of the Young Communist League when he was young. He was a pacifist during World War II, went to jail, and he was a gay man. Walter Nagel was his partner for 10 years before Rustin's death in 1987 at 75. Being gay was kind of like the nail in the coffin. So I think it had a tremendous impact on his ability to rise within the movements where he worked. On the day that I was born black, I was also born a homosexual. Here's the man who convinced Martin Luther King to embrace nonviolence as a tactic. Yes, Bayard Rustin, fired by his close friend. We thank you for your many years of service. The great civil rights leader of the United States panics. This is a homophobic society, we have to remember, that King is living in. And he fears blowback 
on the movement, on the civil rights movement. He fears blowback on himself. Michael Long has written extensively about Rustin. Where did Bayard Rustin's pacifism and interest in nonviolence come from? From his grandmother primarily, Julia Rustin. She reared him in Westchester, Pennsylvania. His grandmother was a Quaker. When somebody asked him why he did what he did, he would often say, because I'm a Quaker and because I believe in equality, human dignity, the unity of the human family, and peace. Nobody knows the trouble I see. That's Bayard Rustin singing on an album of spirituals, and believe it or not, Elizabethan songs. He collected art, antiques, walking sticks. The same Bayard Rustin, whose involvement in nonviolent protest got him beaten. He was arrested over 20 times, jailed. After the March on Washington, Rustin makes the case that Activists should move from street protests to the corridors of power and practice politics. But the movement didn't necessarily see eye to eye with Rustin on that strategy for going forward. No. He was opposed to the Black Power movement and even Black Studies programs, arguing they further isolated Black people. And it all cost him. But now, history has begun to take another look at Bayard Rustin. This was symbolic of kind of bringing Bayard in from the shadows where he had been for so many years and acknowledging his contribution. In 2013, 50 years after the March on Washington, Bayard Rustin was posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama. Today we honor Bayard Rustin's memory by taking our place in his march towards true equality. What I thought was important, and Michelle and I, you know, it's the reason that we were interested in this story, was this reminds us that the fight for justice uh, is typically not just about one group of people or another group of people. Uh, it, it's often in tandem, we have to figure out how do we lift up all people. And the former president nice. sat down with us last uh, week to discuss and Rustin and the, and the film he co-produced about him. You were an organizer before you were a politician. Yeah. To see somebody who could bring the kind of strategic sense that helped to organize some of the seminal moments in the early civil rights movement, to learn about someone like that did inspire me. Now, I have to make a, a, a very clear uh, caveat here. Uh, I never was able to organize as good as he, <laughs> but it did get me thinking about my own role as somebody who could maybe work at a grassroots level and, and, and change the country from the bottom up. Do you think after the film comes out, Worldwide, yeah. people will no longer say Bayard who? <laughs> My hope is that um, he, gets, he gets the credit that it, uh, is due to him. And what I hope Rustin achieves is to remind this new young generation of activists uh, how much they can accomplish. Bayard Rustin has been credited with coining the phrase speaking truth to power. He did that all his life.